Hi, and welcome to Better Pre-Sales. My name is Sasha, and I'm working as a senior sales engineer for a leading cloud software company. If you're looking to start a career in pre-sales or you know, just want to acquire some new skills, if you're already a pre-sales engineer, you're at the right place. Stay tuned. This is the Objection Handling 101 series. A big part of our daily job as solutions engineers or sales engineers is to talk about our product to prospects, customers, maybe our colleagues, to explain the features, go into the technical de details, run demos. And often what happens, of course, uh, if you have an engaged customer, they will be asking questions or they will be even stating objections. It would go something like this. So you're saying that your product is five times faster than uh, your competitors products. I find it really hard to believe. This is a very normal objection. It just shows that the customer is thinking about what you're telling them. It's actually a great sign. For many of us though, intuitively, what we want to do when we hear something like this is dive deep into the product details and explain to them why the product is five times faster because we want them to believe, we want them to be persuaded. And this is not the best way to start handling this objection. If you want to learn the best way, stay with me. Let's talk about the system I use to handle objection. It's called APACT and it has five steps. Today we are talking about the first step, which is to acknowledge or acknowledgement. To acknowledge a customer's question or objection means simply to communicate back to them that you've understood their concern. A typical way to do this would be the following. Yes, I perfectly understand why you would be asking such a question. Or a customer might be saying something like this. Your product is way too expensive for us. I bet you heard this one before, right? The way to handle this is to let them know that you are going to take their concerns seriously by saying, yes, I perfectly understand that nobody wants to buy a product. They don't believe it's worth the value, it's worth the price tag. This is a good beginning of telling them that, yes, we are going to take your concerns seriously. Maybe you're going to talk about that. If you want to sound a little bit more personal, authentic, you can say something along these lines. Yeah, I understand why you're asking this. And as I was starting at my company and learning about my product, I was asking myself uh, the same questions back then. So next time when you're pitching your product to a customer, try to imagine yourself in their shoes. And as you're handling their objection, you are going to sound much more authentic. Important thing to remember is it's not about you. The whole show you're doing is not about you. It's really about the audience. It's about the customer and it's about them understanding that their concerns and challenges and questions are going to be taken seriously and understood. And practice makes perfect. Use your everyday life situations, talking to family or friends to practice objection handling doesn't have to be about selling software. It can be any topic of discussion. You'll notice also some people are more skilled at this. And this is a skill that almost anyone can acquire by enough practice. Now let's step out of the realm of selling software and have a look at a couple of pros handling objections from other walks of life. Hey, who's got a question about how the what the president does in the White House? Yes, David. Um, I just wanted to know, I mean, you were just coming down the hall in the Oval Office showing us how nice, you know, everything around here is. Just look around the room. And I don't know, personally, if I lived here, I would be, I would feel constrained to actually live, you know? I mean, it's just so <laughs> nice that everything is so perfect. I would not, I mean, I don't know. So how do you feel about it? I feel a little that way too sometimes. <laughs> but let me say that uh, upstairs on the second floor. Politicians do this on a daily basis. They're really skilled at handling questions and objections. And we've seen here in this Q&A with kids at the White House, President Clinton being asked about the house he lives in and how it doesn't really feel like a normal house where people would live. It 
feels more like a museum, expensive paintings, China, whatever, you can break anything there, so you have to be super careful, a lot of employees there, so it doesn't feel like a house. So the question or objection is, I couldn't live here, man, how do you do this? And you've seen how spontaneously President Clinton just acknowledges that objection and saying, you know, I feel sometimes exactly like that. And that's all it took. You get instantaneous uh, authenticity, he sounds natural, he sounds like a normal person, the kids identify with him because he can identify with them, and that's the perfect way to handle an objection. Let's have a look at another example. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Michael Tabb from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I just had Sorry one... Sorry about your Falcons yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep who, on a, let's I'm keep sorry, on a who positive they, who note. Are they, who were they playing again? <laughs> let's keep on a positive note. I, was I, that the Chicago Bears that he was playing? <laughs> we'll, we'll see you again in the playoffs. <laughs> 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 I, I had one question. Um, I've read through the... This is a top shelf objection handling. One thing to remember is that when you're pitching a product to the audience or whatever you're pitching, for the audience, it's also not easy to state objections. I mean, stating objections is a kind of, you're saying that you disagree with the speaker and the speaker is an authority on this matter, so it doesn't fall easy on the audience. So President Obama, by swooping in with this comment, even before the question was asked, gets everybody to relax, diffuses the tension, and probably wins that person onto his side. He acknowledges the person without knowing what the person is asking, but making sure the person understands I'm the same like you and this is all about you, this is not about me, I hear you, I respect you. That's all you want to happen in this first step when you are acknowledging the objection. Finally, here's a couple of pointers to keep in mind when doing acknowledgement. You're talking to humans of flesh and blood, put yourself in their shoes, Make sure they understand that you have understood their concerns, their question. Deals, like selling software deals, they are won not just by persuading them that your product is technically superior and by winning their minds. A big part of selling it also having a really establishing a really good relationship and winning their hearts as well and thinking, well, this is really cool the way how they work with their customers, you know, I like to work with this company, I like that. I know nothing about their product yet, but my first impression is that I like the way how they're talking to me. That's where you want to be. And that's why you want to use every possible opportunity, including questions and objection handling, to establish a very good relationship with a customer from the get-go. That was all that you need to know about acknowledgement. After successfully acknowledging customer's question or objection, the next step is to do a probe. And we'll talk about probe in the next video. Please click on like if you found this video useful. I'm also interested to hear about your objection handling experiences, so feel free to write in the comment section or also let me know if there are other topics you would like to learn about. Thanks for watching the Better Pre-Sales channel. Subscribe for more content.